Hi everyone, here are nine amazing Excel features that you absolutely have to know if you're working in project management or in data or in anything else that uses Excel for that matter. This is a great way to get up to speed in Excel very, very quickly. The nine things we're going to go through are how to create a pivot table, how to use VLOOKUP, how to do quick analysis or add data bars to your cells, how to do an if then else statement, how to use spark lines in your Excel sheet. These are so cool. How to use wildcard to find things that might match only part of what you're looking for, how to use trim to remove unwanted spaces, how to use transpose to change things from up and down to left to right, and how to use case to change things to uppercase, lowercase, or proper case in your document. This is going to be amazing. Let's get into it. The first thing you'll notice is we've got a whole bunch of data in this wonderful spreadsheet with names, job titles, departments, and their employee IDs. So all of this comes together and we're just going to create a table. We're going to select the top left to the bottom right, the whole lot of data, then go to home and format as a table. If we select just this custom one here with no extra formatting on it, as you can see, here's the range. And we'll say that my table has headers already. And now we've got this table so we can refer to this table when we're working with all of the data. And that's going to be very, very handy with our first trick, which is going to insert a pivot table. So we'll select anywhere on this table. We'll insert pivot table. And the range that we want to select is just that table that we just created, so table two. If you don't have a table, by the way, you'll just have to select all of that data and that will be your range. We'll click OK into a new worksheet. Now a pivot table is just a really, really easy way to create a simplified table of just the data that you want out of a larger table of data. So what that means is we're still going to have columns and we're still going to have rows, but we get to pick and choose which ones we want and we can pick and choose the values that we want in those rows and columns. So for our purposes in the columns uh, section, we're going to select the country. Now, if we just tick that, it goes to rows. So we want to move that over to columns. And as you can see, now we've got those countries here uh, as our column headers. Now, what do we want to put in the rows? We're going to click job title. Now, job title comes up as our rows label. So from top to bottom, all of the different job titles that we have. But as you can see, there's no data in there just yet. So we want to count how many of each of these different job titles are in each country. And to do that, let's grab our job title and we'll put that into values. That's going to give us the count of the job title. Now we can change that if we want to with the value field settings. We could make it the sum or the average or the maximum or the minimum. But I think just the count for us is what we want. And now, as you can see, we've got a count of all of the different job titles in each of the countries. One last thing, we could add a filter here. So if we say department, we can drag that into filters. Now by doing that, you can see we've got our department filters up here. We could select multiple items and we might just say we only want to check the engineering department. So in the engineering department, now we've got all of these different job titles and here's how many people we've got in each of the countries. And that's a wonderful way to display the data in a pivot table. Now our next one is using VLOOKUP to find information. This is a wonderful way, if we go back to our data, to find how information relates to our table. For example, in this sheet, we've got a whole bunch of IDs or employee IDs, but we need to find their full name, their job title, annual salary and their bonus. How do we do that when we all we have is their ID? Well, we can use VLOOKUP and we want to say in, the, in this next column here, we'll say equals VLOOKUP. Now it gives us some hints on what we want to look for. So the lookup value, we're looking for the employee ID. So we're just going to select that cell, do a comma. Now the table array is the whole universe that we're searching through. So we're going to go back to our data and we're going to select our table. So this is our table from the top left to the bottom right. And we just need to make sure that the employee ID is going to be all the way on the left because we're going to be searching from left to right. So as long as we've got that, we'll be okay. As you can see, when we've selected our entire table, it's just gone table two, which is the name of our table, and all. So that's everything in the table that makes it nice and easy. We're going to put a little comma for the next part. Now, the next thing we're looking for is the index number. So the column index number. As I said, the employee ID has to be on the left, uh, the very, very left, and that is column number one. Everything else is relative to that. So we've got one, 
two, three, column four, column five, column six, column seven, all the way up to the end. So if we're looking for the, the full name, the full name was the first one we're looking for, that is column one, two. So we're going to put column two. And then lastly, it's just asking us if we want an exact match or an approximate match. We really want an exact match for this. So we're going to say false, and then we're going to close our bracket. And as you can see, it's given us Emily Davis as the employee ID for that particular one. And we can select this and drag this all the way down and it will match all of the employee IDs that we have on the left. Now here is a little trick because we're going to be dragging this over to the right hand side. So we actually want this A, we want this employee ID to stay in that cell. And to do that, we want that A to not move. So we're going to put a little dollar sign next to the A. And if we do that, we'll just drag that down so they all match. Now they all have that dollar sign and they're not going to move. If we select that and drag that across, then it gives us the formula to work with. But it's still got Emily Davis because it's still looking at the second index column, the column index. So the job title, I think that was column number three. Let's have a look if we do that. And there we are, uh, column three, and we'll drag that all the way down again. And now we've got the job titles for all of our employee IDs. What about annual salary and, and annual bonus? Let's drag it across again, and annual salary from memory. I think that was column number 10. Let's check, there we go, and we'll drag that all the way down. And you know what we can do? We can turn this, uh, if we right click this, format cells, let's just turn this into a currency style. I think that will look a little bit nicer. Very, very good. And lastly, the bonus, I think that was column number 11. There we go, that's 15%. We'll drag that all the way down and we'll just go up here and turn that into a percentage so that that looks a little bit nicer. That is how you use VLOOKUP in your Excel spreadsheet. Now we've got some really, really fun stuff. This is quick analysis or data bars. What I'm going to do is just clear this off. And so as you can see, there's, there's no formatting on this. But if we select all of these data bars with all of the different annual salaries in them, this one is so cool. We go to conditional formatting and data bars you can choose any color that you like. Here we go, we'll just do a nice blue one. Now it's going to show us a bit of a chart. It's like a bar chart for our highest to our lowest annual salary. So we can see that at a glance. If you do select these things, you can also go to quick analysis down the bottom here. And now you can see we can add a few other things. We could add an icon set. How cool is that? This one is around the same or it's lower or it's higher or we might have greater than, or we might have just the top 10% uh, being, being checked there. As you can see, that's pretty cool. Or we could add a color scale, which is another way to do it. So there's a few different things that we can do, and all of them look really, really good. Next, we've got our if then else statement. This is probably one of the staples of your Excel uh, spreadsheet. You'll use this all the time. Let's say we want to check if a salary is over $100,000. How are we going to do that? Well, we've got all of that data that we found in our VLOOKUP and in our salary cell, we're just going to say equals if and open up a bracket. Now, what is, what is the if that we're looking for? We are looking for this cell, annual salary, to be greater than, with our greater than symbol, and we want that to be greater than 100,000. And we put a comma. So if that's true, let's just say yes. And we'll put yes in quotes because it's a word, so it's not a formula. And we'll do the same. What if it's false? Then we're going to put no in quotes because it's just a word again. We close off the bracket. And this particular one is over 100,000, so it gives us a yes. We will drag this all the way down and see if it works. And we'll put it in the center. As you can see, this one is under and it says no. This one's under and it says no. This one's over and it says yes. Now we've done our if then else statement and we've found if a salary is over $100,000. Our next one is sparklines and this one is really, really cool. So what we want to do here, we've got a range of salaries in different countries for senior manager. So we're going to select those three things because that's going to give us a trend or a bit of a, a chart that we can chart. But the really cool thing about this is it's a chart, but just in one cell. So we select those three things. We're going to go to insert over to spark lines and go to line. Now the data range is already selected 
and the location range, we just want that to be in the cell next to it. So we're going to click that and click OK. Now it's given us a line, but we want a little bit more information here. Let's give us some markers. And now we might make those blue or we could make them red. It's up to you. You can also do things like the high point or the low point and make sure that they sort of stand out a little, a little bit. So there's lots of things that you can change if you want to. If we select that and drag that all the way down, then it will adjust for all of the other rows in our column. And now you can easily see at a glance the trends for the salaries in the different countries around the world. So cool. Our next one is the wild card. The wild card is an asterisk and it just means that we can find a word in a, in a bunch of other words. So it doesn't have to match exactly senior manager. We could just search for manager. We're going to go equals and we're going to say count if. We're going to open up our bracket. Now the range that we're looking for is just the job title. Then we'll put a comma. Now the criteria, if we put in our quotes, because we're looking for a word, we're going to use our asterisk because it's a wild card. We're going to say manager. Now we want a wildcard on the other end as well because it, we might have manager of operations or something else on the end. We're just looking for manager in between some text. Close off our quotes and then close off our bracket. And if we close that off and say enter, that's going to count one lot of manager. We can drag this all the way down. And as you can see, we've got ones when we do have a manager and zeros when we don't have a manager. If we select all of this, we can go to conditional formatting and we can just give ourselves a little color scale here and that way they really stand out. You can obviously change that to any color that you like, but now we've got green for uh, for a yes and red for no and that's a nice easy way to see. Third last, we have a whole bunch of data. Now this is if we're putting data into a spreadsheet and it's not clean data. We've got a whole bunch of spaces all over the place. Spaces on the left, extra spaces in the middle, spaces on the right hand side. Our data is really messy and unclean. We're going to say equals trim. Open up our bracket and select the cell that we want to trim and then close our bracket and that's going to get rid of any extra spaces. So now we've just got normal amount of spaces all the way down. As you can see, we've got the normal names with the normal formatting without all of these extra spaces that came in from the unclean data. Fantastic stuff. Second to last is transposing. This is going from top to bottom to left to right. Let's see what it means. We select all of this data that we have here. We control C to copy or we can right click and copy like that. Now over here, we're going to right click and we're going to say paste special or we can just go straight to transpose here, but we could go uh, paste special and we can select transpose down the bottom if we want to do it that way. Now it's going from left to right instead of uh, top to bottom. As you can see, it broke some of our V lookup. So that's really unfortunate. We've still got that first cell though. If we drag that all the way across, that will fix what we're looking for because now, as you can see, it's still referencing that ID up the top. Isn't that wonderful? But not as wonderful as this last one, which is changing the case to upper, lower or proper case. What we've got here is Emily Davis uh, for our employee name. If we say equals upper and open up our bracket, the text that we're selecting is the name. We'll close our bracket. That gives us it all in uppercase for all of our names if we wanted to do that. We can do the same for lowercase equals lower, open up our bracket, select the name, and now it's all in lowercase if we needed it that way. Now, what if we wanted to change this back to proper case? We'll say equals select, uh, type in proper, open up our bracket, select all of the lowercase text, close our bracket and now it brings it back to proper case just like a normal name. And those are nine amazing techniques to get you up to speed in Excel very, very quickly. I hope you've enjoyed because I've had an absolute blast doing this with you and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.